Back again, ladies and gents, with the never-ending never story of ignition system problems. As usual, 1978 Toyota pickup, high lux as it's known in the rest of the world. 20R engine. We were having ignition problems with this and a really inconsistent idle. And so far, we've replaced spark plugs, spark plug wires, cap, rotor, rebuilt distributor. And it still didn't work. Put a new coil in it. Still no help. So it looked like the igniter box was bad. And that's a problem because they're 250 to 400 bucks aftermarket part. If you could even get one from the dealer for this generation, the first generation, 75 to 78, they're about $800 or more. Uh, Lakeland Toyota, Village Toyota, they have it listed on their parts, but Village, I think, wants $859, some silly damn thing. So, we looked at the forums, and we decided to go with the General Motors High Energy Ignition Ignition Module and do a retrofit. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this thing works. It works great. When I had it running, it solved a lot of the problems. It solved a lot of the inconsistent idle problem. Not all of it, but that's another story. I'll get to that. It I had a miss in it when it got around 1,000 RPM. Miss is totally gone. So that was that's a, that's a good deal there. And it really didn't take much except some wire, some crimp on connectors, a little shrink wrap. Just a little fabrication, no big deal. So I'll go through this and show you what I did. Parts on this, okay? AC Delco part here, as you can see, there's the part number 10474610. That's the heat sink. Heat sink, really important to this. It's all aluminum. It does take a little modification. You have to get a hacksaw blade or a grind, small grinding wheel or something. There's another fin that goes right here. You have to take that off so this will fit and line up with the holes that are in it. We have standard motor products, T series, ignition module, part number LX301T. This is the lower price of the two. There is an LX301. But, uh, surprisingly, look at this. Made in the U.S. Not bad. About $15 for the heat sink. $17 for the module. That's about half the cost you're going to get at any parts store. I got both of these from Rock Auto. Shipped together for $3 shipping. Good deal. So here we go. Took the old igniter box off of here. If you look at my old videos, you see it's a big old box. Take it off of it. There's two little ear tabs under there that I just bent up so they were in line with the screws going straight down. And they actually did thread in, but I've got nuts under there too just for the fun of it and just to make sure it's secure and doesn't rattle off or go anywhere. But you can do this. You can attach it to your fender well inside the fender anywhere you got a convenient spot as long as it's out of the weather pretty much and it's not a lot of wires to hook it up believe it or not but again mount your heat sink this module comes with a plastic package of heat heat transfer grease is that the proper term Heat sink compound, that's the proper term, there we go. Do not use dielectric grease, it's not conductive. There's a metal plate on the back of this module that's in contact with that, which is in contact with the bracket, which is in contact with the ground. That's kind of important. Also, dielectric grease doesn't really transfer heat very well. Don't use it. Heat transfer compound. If you need some extra, you don't have a little packet or something happens, Radio Shack has it for three bucks a tube. Real easy. So, mounted this up with the two screws. 
that I bought at Ace Hardware. They were cheap, 20 cents a piece. And they're stainless, so they're not going to rust on me. Made a ground wire, because there's, see this little pad here? That's a ground point. Made a ground wire and took it to a body ground. Nice and solid. Grounding these is super important. Lots of guys have trouble. They put it in. Oh, it doesn't start. It doesn't spark. I have no spark or I have a really weak spark. Well, it's because you have, a, you have no, almost no ground or you have no ground. I decided not to fool with this and just put a straight ground in. Over here, you've got a pickup coil in your distributor. You have a red and a white wire coming out of it. Yeah, I know it looks pink, but that's from, you know, age fading. Runs back here. There's a shielded sleeve on here. Had a little tab on it. And I just used the tab to mount it underneath and put a nut on there to hold it on. So, I went splicing a white and a green wire right here. Come around here. There's a W terminal and a green terminal. White goes to white. If you remember white goes to white, it can't mess this up. And if you use red instead of green, doesn't matter. The red goes there to the G. Over here, you've got a, B, a C and a B. B is battery, C is common. B battery power. This runs back here and goes to the original outlet for the ignition 12 volt switched from your ignition switch. Okay. The other one I put on the plus on the coil. Both come out of the same one. With my key on, or with my key turn to start, both of these have 12 volt power. So you can still use the fuse and the fuse panel inside. It's still a fused ignition circuit, nice and simple. I just put a couple quarter inch male spade lugs on here, crimped them, shrink wrapped, shove it right into the female lugs in this plug. Simple. So, one hot here, one hot there. Common, black, goes to the negative post on the coil. This is what switches the circuit. Magnetic pickup sends a pulsing signal through this wire. Boom. The circuitry in here reads that. Turns it into a, it, another signal. There's an AC and DC difference. Don't ask me to explain it right now. It's a little over my head. But it goes and changes into a signal to this black wire. This is what triggers your coil. On and off, on and off, on and off. Throw spark. Boom. Out here to your distributor. All right, this white wire is not needed. Is this a convenience for me? Hooked up to the negative post, put on a spade lug, crimp, shrink, shrink, shrink tube. I put female on here and I put a male spade lug on the wire for my tack. So I can just come over here and just, whoops, excuse me, just plug in my tack when I'm doing tune-ups. And I can see what it's doing. Nice and simple. Uh, I know you guys have later models, the second generation, they have a tack on the dash. Uh, there's something about having to put a thousand, thousand ohm resistor in line to get the tack to work. That's on some, on some of the forums. You can look it up. It's there. Since it doesn't concern me, I don't know much about it. This is just a really straight hookup. But if you're going to use the factory tack on the later model, you're going to have to put a resistor in or it won't work if you just hook it up to the negative post. It needs an extra resistor. You can look it up. Forums have it. Yoda Tech, Toyota Minis, Pirate 4x4, it's all in there. Easy to find. If you look up GM, GM HEI conversion Toyota, you'll find this online. You can read about it all day long, which is what I did to figure it out. Mine fired up on the first shot. Like I said, runs pretty good. But after doing all this ignition work, what happened was, found out my ignition switch inside was intermittent. I get it to run and run for two minutes and just totally boof, drop out. Turn it on, run for 40 seconds, boof, dropped out. Dead stall. Not even sputter stall, just dead stall. 
Start it again. It ran for 10 minutes. Boom. Dead stall. <laughs> and last time I did that, I was watching the tack, which I had taped down over here so I could see it. And I saw the needle go poof. Not like you expect. Just bam. That told me it was an electrical problem. So it's the ignition switch. And that's the last ignition part on this truck I got to replace. After that should be fine. Uh, lastly, as far as the inconsistent idle went, turns out brake booster line was crap. Check valve here. It tested okay. I cleaned it. It only draws vacuum this way. It won't let anything go back that way. Hooked it up. Still had an inconsistent idle. As you can see, it's not hooked up. Goes to that nice big plug down there. Right there. Hooked that all that up. It was still inconsistent idle. Pulled it off. Put the plug on. Runs fine. No more inconsistent idle. No more idle hunting around. Which means brake booster diaphragm inside is ruptured. Or I've got a problem with the inlet valve on the inside. From the looks of it, it's old. I've had this truck 18, almost 19 years. I've never touched that. Looks like an old Bendix replacement unit. Uh, Rock Auto wants about 100 bucks for one. Anything local. They still have to order it, and it's 160 to 220 dollars. I'm not fooling with that. You could pull that off and run this thing, and you'll have manual brakes, which, as long as you're not being stupid or crazy, will work. So until I get it replaced, I'm just going to run it like this. It won't hurt anything. And at least once I get the ignition switch in there, it'll it'll run for me, and I can drive it, which is the point. But there you go, GM HEI ignition conversion. It's really straightforward, really simple. Don't overthink it. I overthought it. I looked at this for a week. But I'm scared to death. I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to doing these things. But, phew, for $30, $35 delivered, instead of $250 to $400 bucks for the other plug-and-play Toyota one, and it's an aftermarket unit, mm, I can't argue about this. If this ever goes out, any auto parts store will have one. They're anywhere from $15 bucks to $30 bucks. You got a screwdriver and maybe a little adjustable wrench. You can change this out five, ten minutes and be on your way. Toyota Nighter goes out. I know it lasts a long time. I know it's a factory part. Mine was original. It lasted 38 years. But man, I can't afford to spend that kind of money. And with it like this, quick disconnect. Boom, 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 boom. Two screws. There you go. Done. Is in a hurry, I could probably get it done in five minutes. No big deal. So, there you go. Just thought I'd show you just for interest's sake. And we're gonna wait until we get that ignition switch in. Should be in here tomorrow, and we're gonna find out if she works. May post it up later. Thanks again for watching. Hope it's some help to you.